What's up everyone, Mitch here with another Logic Pro 9 tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to be giving an overview of the Bitcrusher plugin. Very cool. Now, I just did a tutorial not too long ago of a dubstep element in which I used the Bitcrusher plugin and I went over it a little bit in that tutorial. But in this one, I'm just going to go into a little bit more depth. All right. So, what is this Bitcrusher plugin? What it does is it takes a track and we, it allows us to do a couple things. It allows us to lower the bit rate of the track and mess with the frequency, the sample rate, uh, or sa sample frequency, basically, of the track, which is very cool, because what this allows us to do is kind of reverse time a little bit, when um, electronic music and all this kind of digital stuff was just starting up, we had different bit rates for our music, and uh, different frequencies and all kinds of stuff, so it allows us just to, uh, you know, it, take um, maybe electronic music and turn it into more of a uh, old school kind of a sound, which is very cool. But in this example that I'm going to be showing you later on in this tutorial, I'm going to be taking vocals and doing putting a bit crusher on them, and uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different kind of example, all right? So, all right, so let's look at this bit crusher plugin. All right, when you first open it up, it looks pretty simple, which is... It is pretty simple. It's a very cool plugin. Um, the drive here is basically an overdrive. Uh, it's inducing an overdrive effect on your track. All right. The resolution is synonymous with the bit rate. The down sampling is that uh, sampling frequency that I was talking about. We can also choose the different kinds of modes and the clip level. Now, the clip level is. Um, I'm going to say right now it's basically a limiter, but it's not really a limiter. What it's doing is it's taking the peaks. Um, the peaks of the track and what it's doing is it's flipping the peaks down and it's just going to keep flipping them. So you see, see if I, the down sampling rate is uh, pretty low uh, and the different mode is going to look different but if I do the first mode and I lower the clip frequency what it's doing is it's taking the peaks and bouncing it. It's like almost inverting the peaks and it just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going and what it's doing is it, it will add a more of a static signature to the track, which is very cool in some instances. But it's also going to tr decrease the volume of the track. So I like to keep my clip level generally pretty high, down sampling generally pretty low, especially when you're working with vocals and guitar and you're using this plugin on those. Another thing that most people don't know is that there's a mix option. All the time, when when you first open it up, it's at a hundred percent. But what we can do is mix it with the dry signal, and create a kind of a mixed track, which is pretty cool. This is very cool, and I use it this option on this vocals that I do um, in this tutorial. All right, so let's get into this actual track. Um, without the vocals, it sounds like this. This is a rock song. And what I'm doing is like an, almost an interlude to uh, this song, so it's going to sound like this. All right, so, but I just didn't want this interlude, this just music. I wanted to put some vocals to it, but I wanted to make it really interesting. So what I do is I have one channel that's just purely reverse reverb, and if you didn't know, the Space Designer plugin has a nice reverse option. Um, it's kind of it's kind of janky because you have to move the track forward in time so that it can allow for a reverse reverb later. Um, so mess with this if you'd like to, but uh, yeah, it's kind of janky. It's kind of stupid. But anyway, on the actual track that my vocals are going to be coming through, I have a filter on the track, and on the uh, reverse reverb, I increase the highs. So what this is going to be doing is it's going to bring out the it's going to reverse reverb into a higher sounding um, track is gonna oh I have low battery in my mouse Look at that. so uh, it's gonna give it the higher frequencies reverse reverb and it's gonna have like almost a radio effect on my vocals which is pretty cool alright so and I usually have a bit crusher but I'm gonna play it without the bit crusher and then after and see what it sounds like so here goes All right, and so with the bit crusher, it's going to sound like this. All right, so it, it brings out, it makes it, puts a little bit of overdrive on the track, um, makes it, I, I downsample a little bit, so it just sounds a little bit, um, 
uh, you know, it has a, like that higher frequency um, overdrive on it and it sounds really cool. And another thing that I want to mention is I have my mix pretty low. So that's why it's sounding um, almost like the original. But I do have that that nice overdrive effect on it. So uh, yeah, you can definitely use it with all kinds of vocals, uh, clean vocals as well. And then also guitar, I've used it on guitar also. So uh, yeah, I will also post a link to the uh, tutorial in which I talked about dubstep and uh, the Bit Crusher with that. So everyone, thanks for watching. I will be seeing you very soon in future tutorials, but in the meantime, stay boss, comment, rate, subscribe. Peace out.